Hey everybody, how are you doing? I just got finished with a run. I'm pretty wore out, but while I was out on my run, I remembered I wanted to share something with you uh, when it comes to Google Forms and another way to use them. Uh, that way is called Branch Logic, and that is kind of like your choose your own adventure storybooks that we used to, to read when we were little kids. You would get a situation and you would get to choose, do you wanna do option A or option B? And you can do that same thing with Google Forms. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so I got showered after my run and I'm back in my uh, little office space and I'm going to start showing you how I begin making my uh, Google Forms that are kind of like choose your own adventure type of Google Forms. Because you kind of have to map it out or you can get confused on what you're doing. So if we look over here at the whiteboard, you can see that I've got this big shape here, okay? It's kind of like a flow chart. At the top, you're gonna to put your topic, whatever topic you wanna to talk about with your students through the Google form. We'll go up there. Now your, your main topic will have subtopics. So you can see I have subtopic one, two, and three. Now, in each subtopic, you're probably going to want to have an activity or two or three. It's up to you how many activities you put in, under each subtopic. But you can see here for each subtopic, I have activity one, activity two, activity one, activity two, activity one, activity two. Now, however many activities you put under there is totally up to you. This is just to, this chart here is just to help you um, organize. You don't have to follow this specific chart. But the next part here, this gatekeeper, you can have a gatekeeper question. So if you want to give your students choice, but you want them to cover all of the topics, you just don't care which order that they go in, then you're going to have a gatekeeper question. And then from the gatekeeper question, then they'll go to the final activity and then they'll submit the Google form. Now, if you don't care if they do all three activities, then you don't have to have this gatekeeper question. You can have a submit after each column here. And it's just giving them a, a, a more of a choice that way. But if you want them to learn all of the topics, all of the subtopics underneath the main thing, then you would want to have this gatekeeper question here to make them recycle back to the beginning to choose another topic. So now that you can kind of see the layout and the thought process behind branch logic and choose your own adventure type of Google Forms, we're gonna go over to the computer and uh, show you how this works inside a Google Form. Okay, here we are at the computer, and this is a, a Google Form that I've already created. Um, it's about extreme environments, and this is a choose your own adventure or branch logic style Google Form. Um, you can see that the kids don't have much of a choice at the beginning here, um, but after we get past this uh, first page, then they have plenty of options. But you can see here the little introduction. You are going to go on a journey into the world. You get to choose your favorite extreme environment to visit. You will discover a new place with a new climate with tons of activities for you to choose from. But beware, there are always risks in the extreme world. And there are certain precautions you will have to take. Are you ready to begin your adventure? So they all had to click yes. And then next. Now from here... They're going to type in their name and choose the period they have, a physical education, and next. Now here, they get to choose their environment. Do they want to discover things that happen in the mountain regions, desert regions, or polar regions? Let's go with polar regions since I'm just kind of going to show you what the outside of this form looks like. And here in just a few minutes, I will take you to the, the back end of this form so you can see how to build it. So polar regions, next. And then it lets them learn a little bit about the polar region, why they made the choice to visit the polar region. They have to put in an answer. Um, and 
the polar regions can have the, many activities for you to do, which one sounds more interesting, and I get to choose one. Um, I'm going to put in some just fake text for this answer right here. Because you, the way I have this set up is they have to put in so much um, content before it will let them move on. So they put in the content, they choose their activity that they're interested in, they click next. They clicked snowshoeing. And they're going to learn a little bit about snowshoeing by watching a video. And then after they watch the video, they have to talk about the equipment as necessary, which equipment is necessary and why. And they tell me if they've ever been snowshoeing before. If they have been or if they haven't been, they have to answer this question. And again, these are set up to where they have to have a certain number of characters before they can move on. So they fill that out. They click the next one. And then here, they're going to be doing some um, research. They're going to choose either uh, frostbite or hypothermia and tell me the signs and symptoms of what happens if it's not taken care of. So again, they have to put in a certain amount of content. And then they have to put in a link of where they found the information. And they can click Next. And then they are at the end of that one. They can go ahead and submit. Now if you want to, you can have them submit another response. And then they take them back to the beginning. And then they can choose a different environment. Let's go to the back end so you can see how I built this. It's based off of what I showed you on the whiteboard. So you're going to have sections. There's section one and you can see I have 31 different sections. You're going to have your question here. This is the very beginning. This is just loading the picture right here. Um, it's not a big deal. Uh, this is the introduction paragraph right here where they all have to choose yes. And then section two, we find out which student is filling out the form. Section three, this is where it gets a little bit um, harder for you as the teacher to set up because now you're going to be giving them options and these options are going to tell us uh, where to send them to. So you can see here that there's mountain, desert, and polar region, but depending on which one they select depends on which section they go to. So if you see these three little dots right here, if you click on that, you can click go to selection based on answer. And that is where these um, options will pop up. So you can see all of the options that I have to go through. These are all the different sections. Okay, And you would just choose which section you want the student to go to based on their answer. Now if they chose mountain region, like I'm, since I'm just scrolling down, I'm just assuming that they chose mountain region, um, you can have your little introduction this is a start of a new section, section four, mountain region. Why did you choose to go to the mountains? So you can see here, I went to the little dots again, and it says uh, response validation. If you click on that, then you'll have these options down here. You can have length or regular expression. I chose length, and then minimum character count. I had it set up so my Students have to choose or to type 150 characters. And then you can choose what you want the uh, warning underneath the question to say. So if we go back to the live form, let me go back and type in my name again real quick. 
and I will choose my section after it goes through. Let's choose mountains this time since I already said we were talking about mountains. So if I, I'm going to type in four characters. It says, I want to know all the reasons you chose this environment. I typed that in right here on the back end. I want to know all the reasons you chose this environment. Um, you can type in whatever you want to do. I was just trying to encourage them to write more. And as soon as it gets up to 150 characters, then that little warning sign will go away. So it requires them to write a certain amount of content to make sure that they really understand uh, what, you, what it is you want them to talk about. Then we have another question. As you are hiking up the mountain trail to the peak, you came across a black bear. What do you do? It gives them three options. And then it, I, again, I went to the three dots. And I used the go to section based on answer option. And then I chose the different sections that I wanted them to go to for this question. They hit, the answers were play dead, make a lot of noise, and give them food. And if they chose play dead, it would take them to this section. Click the back button, don't play dead with the bear or you'll be dead. Um, or if they choose make a lot of noise, that would have been the correct answer. And then they would have to answer another question. What made you think to try to scare the bear? And then the other one, um, give them food. Well, we obviously know that's not right. But let's see what section 12 says. So you can see what I put there. No. In general, you don't want to feed bears, okay? And it would tell them to click the back button so they could go back and choose the correct answer. And you're going to just continue doing that throughout your Google Form. If you give them options, each option should have a separate place to go to. Or if you want to give them a, a limit on how many characters to make sure you get them critically thinking about what the topic is, you can impose those limits. Now you don't have to do that at all. You don't have to put those limits on there uh, for them to get through the Google Form. It's just something I chose to do. One thing that I forgot to mention uh, while I had the Google Form on the screen was that you need to make sure to create all of your sections ahead of time. That way, Whenever you go to the little uh, dots on the bottom right of that question and you choose response validation or go to a section based on an answer, then you will have those sections made already and you can just choose real quick which one to go to. If you don't make the sections ahead of time, then they won't be there as options. So I hope this video helped you. And if it did, um, I hope you share it with somebody else and let them learn how to use uh, branch logic or choose your own adventure types of Google Forms for their classes. And as always, if you have questions, uh, please just leave a comment below and um, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. See you in the next video.